Hello lovely learners, it's another wonderful day and I hope you are doing well. We thank God and on behalf of management, I greet you all. Now we are continuing with our virtual learning and we are still on machines. This is JHS2 and I'm still your teacher, Mr. Samuel Yeboa. I hope you have been wondering how some machines are able to operate or work. Now today we are looking at the various terms and our machines. Now we are looking at the following terms and our machines. That is mechanical advantage. We also look at the velocity ratio. We are going to look at the meaning of work input. We also look at the meaning of work output and also efficiency of a machine. So this is what we are studying today and I'll continue to urge you to pay attention so that we can all achieve our objective for the day. And as you already know, we are expecting something by the end of this lesson. And by the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain the following terms as I've already mentioned. That is mechanical advantage, velocity ratio, work input or energy input, work output or work energy, and also efficiency. Now you should be able to outline some uses of machines. And finally, you should be able to explain the general ways of caring for or maintaining machines. So this is what we are expecting to achieve at the end of this lesson. And so without wasting my time, what is mechanical advantage? <coughs> now mechanical advantage is the ratio of the load to the effort applied. It is the ratio of the load to the effort applied. And this can be expressed mathematically as load over effort. This is expressed as load over effort. Now you know the load, if you have something to perform or you have a work to perform, let's say you are to carry some goods or materials. The materials you are going to carry is referred to as the load. And the energy you are going to apply to overcome that load is the effort. So if you want to carry something with wheelbarrow, you are going to apply effort to push it or to carry that load. And that is what? Mechanical advantage. The load over the effort. Now this mechanical advantage has no unit. No unit for mechanical advantage. Now we have another term which is also known as velocity ratio or VR. VR or velocity ratio is defined as the ratio of the distance moved by the effort to that of the distance moved by the load. Now last, in our last lesson, I explained something about the effort distance and the load distance. Assuming this is a bar, you have the turning point which is called the pivot or the fulcrum. You have a load here and you have an effort here or when you apply the force. You have load here, you have the pivot, we have the side that you are going to apply the effort or the force to lift this load. Now if you have this diagram here, the distance from the pivot to the load is called the load distance. That is the load distance. The distance between the pivot and to the load is what, is what we call the load distance. And also the distance from the pivot to the effort is also known as the effort distance. That is the distance from the effort to the pivot. Okay, now let's proceed. So the distance or the ratio of the distance moved by the effort 
to that of the distance moved by the load is what we call the velocity ratio of a machine. Now, work input. What is work input? Work input is the work done by the effort applied on a machine. The work done by the effort applied on a machine is known as the work input. We also have another term under machine, which is work input. So, sorry, we have work output and work input. But work input can also be expressed mathematically as the effort times the distance moved by the effort. The effort or the force times the distance moved by the effort. That is the work input. We also have the work output. The work output is a useful work done by a machine when it moves a load through a distance. The useful work done by a machine when it moves a load through a distance. For example, if you have a car and the car transports goods from one destination to another destination, it means that work, there is what? Work output. That is the work output of that car. So it is the useful work done by a machine when it moves a load through a distance. That is work output. Work output can also be expressed mathematically as the load time distance moved by load. And note something here, the work output or the output energy of a machine is always less than the input energy. That is the output energy of a machine is always less than the input energy. It means that when you put in energy, or when you put, let's say you take a car for instance, you fill, you fill your tank, your pet petrol tank or your fuel tank with fu uh, fuel or let's say diesel or petrol. The work you are expecting the car to perform will always be what? You say that that will be the input energy. When you put in the fuel, we call it the input energy. Now, at the end of that, uh, prob uh, that situation, you are expecting some work to be done by the car. And we are saying that the work or the output energy of a machine is always less than the input energy. It means that what you are expecting will be less than what you put into the machine. And that is what the work output. Now let's look at another term here, which is efficiency or efficiency of a machine. Efficiency of a machine is the ratio of the work output to the work input expressed as a percentage. And over here, when we are talking about efficiency of a machine, we are talking about how good or how efficient the machine can work or perform work. How the machine can perform work. When you put in energy, that is efficiency of a machine. And remember, no machine can work 100% efficient. No machine can work 100% efficient. It means that when you feed the machine with energy, what you are expecting from the machine, or what you want the machine, the work that you want the machine to perform for you, you cannot get that work done. Why? Because part of the energy that you put into the machine can be used to overcome frictions. Some can also, some of the energy can be used to overcome noise, or they used to make a lot of noise in the machine. And therefore, no machine is 100% efficient. Efficiency of a machine is also expressed mathematically as work output over work input times 100%. That is the efficiency of a machine. Now let's look at some uses of machines. You can name some and you can give examples of such machines. So let's look at a few here. Uses of machines. One, for cutting. Example, we have a pair of scissors for cutting clothes. 
or pieces of materials. That is what for cutting. We also use machines for lifting heavy loads. Example is a fork lift. The fork lift can lift heavy load from let's say lower position to a higher position. That is the fork lift. Another uses or another work that machines can perform is that we use machines for sewing. Example, the sewing machines are used for sewing or making dresses. We also use machines for grinding. Example, cornmeal machines. The cornmeal machines are used for grinding foodstuffs. Example, corn and other grains. You can name more uses of machines that you can think of. Some machines are used for gathering materials like the shovel or the we have the shovel you can use it or the spade you can use it to gather pieces together now let's look at the general ways of caring for machines how we can care for machines one by oiling and greasing of metal parts to prevent rusting Oil the machine, the machine, especially the metallic parts, to prevent rusting. Another way of caring for machines is also by oiling and greasing to reduce friction. That is when the, the parts are moving. You no, know, the parts are moving, sometimes metals they scratch each other and it causes a lot of problem to the machine and therefore you need to oil it so that movement can be freely done so oiling and greasing to reduce uh, friction another way of caring for machines is by tightening of loose bolts and knots we can also use screws to tighten parts together so tightening of loose bolts and knots, for example, if you have a car and the car ties, you need to make sure that the ties are fit well fit, so that when you are speeding or when you are in a motion, the tie doesn't come out to cause accident. So tightening of loose bolts and knots of machines should be checked always. Now another way of caring for machines is by checking of the tie pressure or the pressure of the tie to make sure that the pressure is very good for the load that you are going to put into the car. So checking of tie pressure of cars and other machines. We can also charge batteries in automobiles or cars. Ways of Caring for machines by charging of batteries in cars and other machines which uses batteries. And also, we can care for machines by topping up of water in the radiator of cars and other machines as well. Make sure that we top up water. You now, the water cools the engines or the parts of the car and other machines to prevent heating or overheating and therefore make sure that you check these things always in order to avoid accident so these are a few ways of caring for machines i hope you've been able to learn something today you've been able to look at the following terms under machines that is mechanical advantage we have also seen the velocity ratio, we've seen the work input, the work output, or the energy output. We've seen the efficiency of a machine, how well a machine can work, or how efficient the machine can work or perform work. We've also seen some uses of machines and general ways of caring for machines. 
Now I'll urge you to revise your notes and continue to stay safe to prevent the pandemic. This is where time will permit us until we meet again. Continue to take good care of yourself and bye-bye.